hang out together. And I'm really excited that you're here. Good morning, how is everyone? Thanks for joining me here on Zoom. It's always nice to have some faces and maybe some people to talk to. And of course, thanks everybody who's watching on Facebook Live. I am going to start this morning with a little gratitude. I just want to lift us all up with some uh, gratitude for another day. It is always a beautiful day when you can get up and, and be healthy and ready to make things happen and ready to, uh, you know, move forward in whatever way you can to start to design that life that you want. And I'm just so grateful for all of you and grateful for this community and this platform. So I just want to acknowledge you all and, and tell you how grateful I am. And uh, I want to have a real conversation today. I think we always do, but you know, I'm going to just tackle something head on. And uh, tomorrow is election day. And we're not going to necessarily get political here, but we are going to get real. Uh, tomorrow's election day and uh, someone will win and someone will lose. Uh, it might be your guy that wins, it might be your guy that loses. Regardless of the outcome, we still get up the next day and have a life to live. Yes? Do we use the term not win? T tell me more. The term loser has a lot of negative connotation. So if you're a winner, great. If you don't win, you don't win. Okay, I, of, I can appreciate that. And I mean, we're, we're definitely going to talk about negative versus positive thinking. So I, I totally will stand corrected and say someone will win and someone will not win. <laughs> that's and that's right. fine. But the, the, the thing is that we're going to get up the next day and we're going to have our, uh, our day and our lives ahead of us. And listen, 2020 has shown us... Um, a lot. This has been a year probably like no other. And we've gone through and continue to go through a pandemic, isolation, social distancing, um, you know, being separated from some people and things that we're normally doing. We may be facing some interruptions in our business or changes in our careers. We might be facing uh, economic repercussions because of that or not. We might uh, remember there's been fires all over the country, hurricanes and all types of natural disasters, civil unrest. We've seen social injustice play out. Um, we have the election now uh, where a lot of people might say the, the country feels divided. And yet I believe 2020 has also shown us opportunity. It has given us the uh, ability to hit the pause button and maybe recoup and regenerate. It's given us an opportunity uh, to reconnect with our homes, reconnect with our families. It's given us increased awareness to the things that we feel are important. It's resorted our priorities for us. Uh, it's given us the ability to look into what we want most for our future. It's given us uh, an opportunity to put the health more on, uh, the focus more on health. It's, it's given us a lot of, of things, you know, the earth has, I think, rejuvenated in some ways uh, because we're just not having the same impact or the same footprint on, on our planet with uh, limited movement. So I think it's all there, right? All of it, the positives, the negatives, it's just, you know, the good and the bad, it's just, it depends on where you want to look. And I think that's always the case, right? So for our Monday morning mojo to set our head on straight, for what might choose to be uh, a very interesting week, what might play out to be a week for some that could be stressful. Um, you know, I think that uh, election stress disorder is a real thing. There's a lot of talk about that right now uh, in a lot of, of, the, of the trade papers that I read in positive psychology. Um, and, you know, there are people who are experiencing anxiety and anxiety can be triggered by a lot of conditions. And I think, that, I think that small doses of anxiety and even fear can be very helpful. Because when you feel anxiety or fear, it usually gives you an opportunity to make decisions about your response. And it gives you an opportunity to think of strategy. The challenge is when an individual gets stuck in that thinking for too long, right? So it's really about managing emotions. And it's really about making decisions about how much you're willing to allow external circumstances to affect your thinking and affect your health. And, and while there are a lot of things at stake and a lot of things 
uh, that you know we can put our energy into. I want to make sure we're putting enough energy into our own mental health. And so I'm going to give a little shout out to um, someone that I enjoy following and someone who um, I believe is a thought leader, and that's Gabrielle Bernstein. I don't know how many of you have heard of Gabrielle Bernstein, Gabby Bernstein. She's an author of Spirit Junkie and uh, some other uh, amazing books like Judgment Detox and Super Attractors, her most recent one. So I purchased her um, deck of affirmation cards. And so this is a really fun way to just get a positive thought into your day. And so what I did what this morning, like I do every morning, is I pull one card and I just kind of make that my, my thought to focus on for the day. And it was it's interesting, the card that I picked, and I um, would have been great if I could have done this for you guys uh, live with you. So here's the affirmation that I chose today randomly out of the deck. I can't control the world but I can control how I choose to perceive it. It's like, well, if that is not the universe trying to tell me we're in alignment with what we're talking about today. So I'm just curious for those of you who are hanging out with me on Zoom, uh, I assume you like to be on the Zoom platform because you might have an opportunity to weigh in or chat with me. Um, and so I'm curious when you hear that, right, that I can't control the world, but I can control how I choose to perceive it. What thoughts come to mind if anyone's willing to share? That you are in control of your thoughts. You should be in control and try not to let fear erode that which is slamming up against you. <laughs> yeah, so Jill, that's awesome. Do you mind like, what does that mean for you personally? Um, it's, a routine, you know, it's the head gets filled with a lot of things that uh, are distressing at times. So what I try to do is be mindful of that's that's what's happening, and be deliberate and take action. Um, you know, the action's easier these days. You know, get dressed, go outside, go for a walk, talk to a neighbor, get on the phone. You know, the the five or six things you can do to get you out of that headset. Yeah. Um, and uh, it seems to be working. I mean, it, you know, the down the, when when, uh, when you're done, now you get back to another place, which is a, a little bit better. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's awesome, Sarah. You have that hand raised. How are you this morning? I am well, thank you. Um, I what I am learning is to get out of my. I got into. I got stuck in a loop. You know, the old story loop last year, and um, and I'm real. I really feel like I'm breaking free from that. Um, so again, you, you know, like when, when more current circumstances seem to replicate that old story, you have to go, nope, I'm going with the new story, baby. That's really great. You know, because we all are telling ourselves a story every day, right? The key is, the, the key is to know you hold the pen so you can write that story any way you want. And this is about being centered in faith over fear, being centered in hope over uh, dismay. And, and it's not about that superficial, um, you know, people call it, you know, Pollyanna type positivity. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about setting your mind on the things you can control and setting your mind on the things you want to call and draw into your life. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about really, as Jill said, you know, choosing what you want to focus on and of course, and how you, you respond to it. Um, and we can tell ourselves a lot of stories. And when we can, I think, raise our awareness to our own thinking and condition ourselves to just say, wait, I, I'm really aware of what I'm thinking right now, what I'm telling myself right now, where is that coming from? And does this really belong to me? Right, because sometimes we're taking on thoughts and feelings um, around us, right? And we, so whether it be through the media, whether it be through social media, whether it be through conversations with other people, um, you know, we can, if we allow ourselves, I mean, certainly we wanna learn and process and, and allow that to help us grow and, and perhaps educate us in a lot of ways. But what I'm talking about is when you're taking on other people's emotions and taking on other people's energy, 
And, and 2020 has definitely given us a lot of opportunity to practice this. And, and so, you know, again, I, I felt compelled to bring this conversation around again, especially with the week that we, we're starting, uh, that, you know, there's going to be a lot of frenetic energy around us, regardless of outcomes, um, regardless of uh, who wins and who doesn't, regardless of whatever, you know, the next uh, challenge might be, um, there's always going to be challenge. There's always going to be some type of adversity. And the question is how we choose to respond to it. Because it's our response that creates our own personal outcome. You know, and I'm always interested, um, you know, watching people, human behavior is my thing, and just watching people sometimes even show up on social media, you know, the most well-intentioned people who are really intending to come from a place of, of education, concern, care, contribution, um, and, you know, stating things that they think and feel and believe, and doing so in such a passionate way, but such a high level of energy uh, that basically what they're saying is if you don't think the way I think, then you have a problem. And they are just as negative as the person who might be overtly spewing hatred, right? And I think that we have to recognize that, that we can be, um, we can share information, we can um, encourage, we can inspire, um, but at the end of the day, we have to lay that information in front of people and let them figure out what they want to do with it, right? So even the work I do as a business leader, as a, a, a leader of leaders, as a coach who focuses on uh, uh, life and, and, and behavior and mindset, I'm going to lay the information in front of you and let you decide what you're going to do with it, right? I'm not here to tell you how to think. I'm just here to challenge your thinking. Um, and so, you know, again, it, this, this world that we're living in is, is a beautiful, exciting place that I'm very grateful for. And it also can be confusing and chaotic and at times hard to understand. So I think that this is an opportunity for us to go inward and ask ourselves, where is our faith? Where do we trust and where do we put our hope? And how do we get up every day determined to live our best lives? regardless of what might be happening around us. And I think that, you know, uh, coping mechanisms are, are important to talk about too, right? So I think we've talked a lot about them over the last several months here on Monday Morning Mojo. Uh, I, think the first, uh, I think the first tool in your toolbox is awareness, as I mentioned, right? Is, is really getting more and more consciously aware of your thoughts and really asking ourselves, where is it coming from? Does this really belong to me? Because it may be coming from some other attachment. So that's one. Um, a, another, I would say, tool in your toolbox, right, is learning how to regulate your emotions and your feelings. And, and as I said, anxiety, like in small doses, anxiety and fear can actually be very productive. Uh, because it's going to give you an opportunity to make a, an assessment. It's it, that feeling, right? That intuition that you have, that feeling of, of fear or anxiety, pay attention to it. Let, it. let it help you understand what might be going on around you. And as Sarah said, though, don't get stuck in it. Don't get stuck in it so that it disables you from then deciding what to do next. Um, and I think that it's managing our emotions so that they maintain, that they, they, we stay in that healthy place. Because again, you know, I know there's a lot of things at stake. We can, we can fill in that blank with a lot of statements. But at the end of the day, there's nothing more important for you than your own mental health. So another tool, another coping mechanism could be as simple as really minimizing or limiting how much time you spend watching the news or how much time you spend, you know, scrolling through Facebook. I mean, at the end of the day, what is it that we're looking for? And I know it's ironic because I'm, I'm streaming live on Facebook right now talking to uh, many of you. Uh, and that's a positive use of social media. I think, you know, there are so many opportunities to connect and bring in the world a little bit through a social media platform. Um, and so the communication and connection aspect is, is, is amazing. However, 
when we're sitting there just scrolling and scrolling, what are we looking for? Are we are we programming ourselves to look for or be magnet be a magnet towards the negative and the drama, right? I mean, I don't know if it, if a lot of us are scrolling looking for baby pictures and puppies. Unfortunately, right? I think that we're scrolling to see like what are people thinking out there? And I have to ask you sometimes, what does it matter? I mean, does it really matter to you? Um, what matters most, your thoughts or the thoughts of someone else? So I think another tool or coping mechanism is, is to really set some boundaries, you know, is to really limit the exposure you're having to sensationalism and negativity. Uh, and, and at the end of the day, I would ask myself, so everyone's sharing their thoughts and opinions about what's going to happen in this world, okay? Is there anyone telling me an idea or a solution? Is there anyone willing to share with me how we can move forward? Or are we all just, you know, being like news reporters and saying, well, this is what's going on and this is what's being said and this is what's happening and this is what, what the, you know, impact will be. Okay, well, let's talk about what the solution is. So again, not putting your head in the sand, but certainly wondering how much we can expose ourselves to the negativity and the sensationalism. So I think that's a coping coping mechanism. I think, you know, also another tool uh, is to really decide where you'll put your energy. And again, you know, we're going to be vigilant, we're going to be connected, we're going to be informed about what's happening in our world. And I choose to put my faith, my time, and my energy into creating outcomes, positive outcomes for myself and, and for the people that I can impact around me. So I'll ask you to, you know, to, to do the same. Where are you putting your energy right now? Are you putting your energy into the most productive activities? Do you have a goal for where you want to be in every area of your life? So again, on the uh, Facebook page, I've shared a lot of tools. One of them was the Wheel of Life. Might be a great time to pull that out. It's in the file section and do an assessment right now on how you're feeling in each of those areas of your life. And any area you're not feeling super full, what is something, what is one goal that you can set to, to move the needle a little bit? Would I like? Go ahead, Jill. Oh, no, I was going to say, I like what you're saying. And um, I like for the point of you know, coping and looking at the way things can be is to really make an effort to do something new and something different that kind of opens up an opportunity that you haven't had before. So that kind of balances out when you look at what can be replacing the social media experience, um, you know, something that's really out of the ordinary or something you would never have done, but you're going to give it a go. Yeah, absolutely. Create your own reality. Stop trying to watch everyone else's and create your own reality. And you know, it's interesting. I, I use the word opportunity a lot and I believe I am an opportunity magnet. Uh, and I wanna say that before you can have opportunity, you have to believe in possibility. So before you can have opportunity, before you can attract opportunity into your world, you have to believe in possibilities. You have to believe that things can be different. You have to believe that there is possibility around you. You have to believe that even in the darkest of moments, there's always hope. There's always something to be thankful for. There is always something beautiful around you. There is always an opportunity. There is always change. And, and without that, where would you be? Right? So, you know, Again, everyone has a story. Uh, part of my story in my past, I was in a very abusive marriage, my first marriage, almost 10 years. I was physically abused. I was emotionally abused um, and leading a very, very different life than the life I lead today. And even during the most difficult of times during that period of my life, I never lost hope. Because I felt if I lost hope, I would lose myself. So even though there were, you know, days I had to really navigate some difficult things, I had to survive, I had to figure out, you know, what was next. And it took 10 years for me to get out of that relationship. Um, I never lost hope because that to me would be the ultimate 
punishment or abuse, right? So I still was able to find joy in things. And, and everyone's experiences are different. Everyone's uh, story is different and the way we react is different. However, for me, I think that when you can find the beauty in the darkest of places, uh, that's your opportunity. And that's, that's showing you possibility. So, um, you know, another thing that I, I think we talk a lot about, right? We talk a lot about mindset and we talk about positive mindset versus negative mindset. And let's just break that down for a minute. I want to unpack that because, you know, positive versus negative. So I believe that positive thoughts are inspired thoughts. I believe that positive thinking is, is thinking that is around possibility. It is around opportunity. It is around moving forward. It is around growth. It's around options, right? It's all around hope and faith. I believe negative thinking, quite the opposite. Negative thinking is, um, is really very limited, very closed off. I think that negative thinking is um, pointing out the problems rather than the opportunities. I believe that negative thinking or negative speak is, um, is oppressive and tries to persuade people to the chaos or the conflict, right? Half empty. Half the, empty, the, yeah. The ha half empty. Yeah, the glass is half empty or half full, right? Oh, it's all how you decide to look at it. Yep. And so, you know, there are people, again, who are well-intentioned and would never think to, to define themselves as negative. But if you listen to the conversation and if you listen to the words that they choose, and if you listen to the conversations that they're having, um, they're being as negative as, as the, the opponent in their mind is being, right? So that's another tool right now as well as, and we just did this a couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, how to deal with difficult people. And I think you could just pull out the word difficult to insert negative. Um, and again, what we talked about a couple of weeks ago uh, in that conversation was setting boundaries, was again, not, not taking on their thoughts or feelings, but not taking on their energy because energy is all around us, right? So, so we, we are like sponges or we're like Velcro. Maybe that's a better analogy. We're like <laughs> Velcro and stuff sticks to you. So when you're dealing with a negative person, I think you'll recognize a negative person because they're not, they're not quickly talking about solutions. Right. They're stuck and they're stuck in that, that loop of that story that is without possibility, that is without optimism that is without solutions that to me is negative right so i you you must set boundaries around you think of it like a little force field around you and i wish it was as easy as la, 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 when we were little but <laughs> much more than that that's not a tool the no. tool is really to stay centered on your own belief system you know what is your belief system not to say that maybe there isn't some room there for, for growth, but, but at the end of the day, what do you stand firm on? What is your belief system? Where do you put your trust? Where do you put your hope? Is it in a higher power? Is it in, in more of your own ability, right? But if I allow myself to be vulnerable to your energy and ignore my own belief system or my own inner compass, you're doomed. <laughs> I'm literally just cutting myself open and allowing that exposure to come in and, and possibly infect, right? So I think that we have to get super clear about who we are. Now, I love people. I am a people person. I have been told that since I was probably two. I love to talk. I know that comes as a surprise to many of you. Um, and I, I love, and I'm genuinely curious about people. I love connecting and talking to people and listening to your stories. And, and certainly as I've developed myself as a coach, you know, anything I can do to help people live a more meaningful, full life, I'm all about it. And I have boundaries and I'm getting better at those boundaries every day. And I'm okay with sharing that with you, right? That doesn't mean I don't care about you. That doesn't mean I don't want to hear from you. That doesn't mean that I'm closed off to your point of view either. I'll listen. The difference is, am I going to listen, take it in, 
process and decide what works for me and what doesn't. That's how I would work. That's how I work now, right? I'm not going to listen and allow that to confuse me and to um, suffocate me and to make me question and to make me fearful and concerned. You know, I'm going to choose to stand on my own belief and my own faith. And um, like I said, you know, there are a lot of challenges in our world today. In every area of our world, there's a challenge and there's an opportunity. And there has been since the beginning of time. And there will be until the end of time. And I am not making light of any of the challenges that we're facing today in our country, from, from our health concerns to our economy, to our government. I'm not making light of any of it. What I'm saying though, is what will we do as an individual first and as a society second to grow and move forward? And what can you control and what can't you control? So tomorrow, or if you haven't, maybe you've already done so, you cast, you cast your vote and then we wait for the outcome. And the outcome will be the outcome and then we have to decide how we're going to move forward from there. My prayer is always that we move forward together, even if we don't agree. And, and I also have my own goals and my own personal agenda uh, and how I want to continue to develop my career, my family, support my family, how I want to experience this world around me. And I will continue to make those decisions and choose how I respond to everything around me um, so that I can live my best life. That would be my hope for you. Sarah. Oh, um, I, I am just reminded by all of this of it, it. This is a loose version of a Morgan Freeman quote, but it's something like, why would you accept criticism from somebody who you wouldn't go to for advice? <laughs> good one it's and yeah true. i think that i think that's brilliant i it's because it's so true yeah and you know i think that just to address fear and we can talk about this a little bit more in 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 the future um i love the acronym for fear right it's false evidence appearing real and most things that we get very fearful of are never really possible to happen it's just it's usually the story we allow ourselves to create in our mind. And most of the things that we're afraid of um, are not, are, are not going to play out in, in that worst case scenario. Okay. Now, again, that doesn't mean that I don't understand and recognize some of the issues that we need to look at together as a society, and as a country. Um, but it's, it's, it's about approaching that through opportunity through love, through compassion, through peace, through, I think, strategic thinking, not chaos, not hate, not negativity, not uh, closed off and limited, and certainly not where I can look at anyone and say, well, you know what, because you don't think the way I think and because you don't believe what I believe, you're less than. I, I just refuse to think that way. I choose not to feel that way. So. I'm not sure what piece of this message you needed to hear today. I'm not sure, you know, who out there could be inspired to think differently because of it. Um, I just know that um, very much like this card that I picked this morning, which is, is so exciting uh, that this would be a random card I would pick. I, I just will say I can't control the world, but I can control how I choose to perceive it. That's probably my number one tool or coping mechanism is that that belief. So any final thoughts or ahas from you guys? Okay. I like that you confirmed most of our reality in terms of the uncertainty of the times, you know, and what, it, what, what that manages to do for many, I think. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, I'll just close this the way I opened it. 2020 has been a hell of a year and it's been full of a lot of things. And I can list all those, those negative or challenging things. I can also list a lot of the positive things, you know, so, so what are the positive lessons you choose to take away from 2020? 
right? Because even out of the most challenging, adverse times, there's always a lesson. There's always something to take away that you will learn from. So, you know, what, what will you take away from 2020? Because if you've gone through, for some of us, some of us can say, you know, that this is the most difficult year of their life. So if it is, how will you justify it and say, okay, well, I will take something positive from this challenge, right? Because when we can attach meaning to what we're doing, I think that brings a lot of possibility. So what are the lessons you choose to take away from 2020 that are about opportunity, about a shift in mindset, about uh, recentering to values, about you know awareness around yourself, awareness around what is important to you. You know what will you choose to take away from 2020? Because again, that is the vote that you can cast right now, right? So you can cast a vote every day for the way you choose to respond to things. I love you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I trust you will have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys back here next Monday. Thank you for spending time with me. Have a good week. Thank you, you too.